Okay, I want to talk about semantic versioning now. Now, this has to do with version numbers that you're adding to your software or version numbers that you're using for other packages that you're including in your projects. So there's three digits that you'll see in semantic versioning, sometimes called semver. Uh, there's actually a website, semver, S-E-M-V-E-R dot org, that you can go and look at to see what this stands for. But basically, you've got three numbers. The rightmost number, this one, refers to patches. So you're doing a bug fix. You've got some functionality. It already exists in the project. You're just doing a little tweak to it. Something doesn't quite work right. You want to change it. That's the patch number. The minor number is the middle one. The minor number has to do with you've added a new functionality, but it's backward compatible, meaning previous versions are not going to break. If somebody has code and they're using your library and you come up with a new version of it, you've incremented this minor version. If somebody then updates your package to your latest minor version, it's not going to break their code because you haven't changed the way things work. You've just added a new piece of functionality and the new functionality is not going to break anything that already existed. And then the first number right here, the leftmost number, this is the major version. Major version has to do with big changes, new functionality, new features, things that have changed the way your code works internally. So if somebody installs this, there's a good chance that the code that they wrote using your library will no longer work because you have changed something. It could only be one little thing that you've changed, but if it's not backward compatible, that is a major version change. So in our package.json file, which you'll likely have defining your project if you're working on a web project, inside the package.json file, we've got dependencies, and then there's also dev dependencies. You may see a section in here called dev dependencies. And this will be an object as well, just like dependencies is. The difference between these two is that dev dependencies only apply while you're working on the code. They're not something that gets packaged with your project and sent off to the users. So if they're on the website, they're not going to get any of the packages here these are only for while you're working on the code. Dependencies are things that will get downloaded and used on your website or in your project by the end user. Okay, so let's talk about how we can change these and what these little symbols mean. So sometimes you'll see a caret character, sometimes you'll see a tilde in front of this. So what do those mean? There's sometimes you'll see some other package uh, let's just say package, and inside of here, you'll see something like this, 1.x or 1.0.x. What, what does that mean? Well, I think the easiest way to explain this is to show you a fantastic web page that uh, is part of the NPM website. So semver.npmjs.com. I will put this in the uh, description for the video so you can link right to it. What you do is enter the name of the package, not that I would ever use jQuery in one of my projects now, but just it gives me lots of versions so I can explain this. So jQuery, you click on the button, it loads all the available versions of jQuery. Now, inside here, this is where we're going to put in the version number. If I just put one number, that's considered to be a major version, and anything that is a major version will apply to that, except for, you'll see that there are some things that are RC, these are release candidates, or betas, or sometimes you'll see an alpha. Alphas, betas, release candidates, those are not included in this. You have to explicitly say that I want the beta or the release candidate or the alpha version of something. You have to put the full thing there if that's what you want. Now you can always come in and say I want this version and you can give a specific number and nothing else and that will be the version and the only version that your code is going to use. But if you want to say it's a range, you can say, all right, I'm okay with anything that starts with 3.3. So you can just type 3.3, or you can type 3.3.x, where the x will represent anything, any one of the patch versions. Like over here, 1.7. If I do 1.7.x, I will get those two numbers. So 1.7.x, there we are. Anything that has a 1 and a 7, and any version here. Now, if I do provide a third number, 
There it is. If I put in two, it only does that. Now, what if I want to say that either one of those is fine? If you've got version 0.2 or 0.3, they're both fine. Well, then we leave the number, or I can even go back and say zero. And I'm going to say anything that is 1.7 and zero or higher. I can't go up to a 1.8, but anything that's zero or bigger, I can put an X, or I can come in front and put the tilde character like that. That's what this means. If you see the tilde character in front of this, it means the patch version, this number right here. It can be anything that is this number or higher. Let's look for one here where I've got, uh, okay, 2.1. We have a 2.11, 2.12, 2.13, 2.14. So let's come in here and say 2.1.2. So I'm not taking the 0.1, I'm saying 0.2 or higher. So the two, three, and four would all be accepted there. Now, if we have the caret character in front of this, what that does is it targets the second number, this one right here. I can change this one, anything that's one or higher, or if I come in here and I do this, I'm saying anything that's 2.2.0 or higher. So I can change either of these numbers, as long as they're at least this, it can be this or anything higher, but I can't change that first number. I can't change the major version, only the minor and the patch. And those are the minimum numbers. So 2.0, 2.1, 2.2, 2.4. If there was a 2.3, we could do that as well. Actually here, so we've got 3.0, 3.1, 3.2, 3.3. Let's do that. We'll say 3.1.0. There it is, 3.1.0 or higher. So we can go any of those patch or any of those minor versions. 3.0, however, doesn't work. If I came in here and said two is the minimum number, okay, there we are. So with the caret, we're targeting the minor version. With the tilde, we're targeting the patch version. And if you want any version whatsoever, you can just say X or asterisk or just give a single number like that and you will target the whole thing. So we can use any of those. This is a great way to experiment with it. We can use any of those that we want to add dependencies in here. So let's come in and we'll try out a couple of these just to see that they are working. Okay, inside my package.json, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna install as a dev dependency. That's what capital D stands for. Um, I want to install, let's say, node fetch. And I know node fetch, the maximum number right now is 2.2.0. So I will say at, and we'll use the caret character, 2.1. So I'm saying that's anything that is 2.1 or higher, a higher minor version. There we are, installed, and there it is. There wasn't a 2.1, but because I used the caret character, it jumped up to 2.2, said, there you go. This is what we've got, 2.2 or higher. Uh, we could do another one. Uh, we can do that jQuery. So npm install, and let's do it as a production. So that's a dependency in here. We're gonna install jQuery at and We'll do the tilde 3.3.0. So anything that's 3.3, any patch version from zero or higher. Boom, so 3.3.1, that's the latest one. And there we are. So we've got the 3.3.1 uh, is installed right now. Okay, so that's, uh, that's it. Or you can manually, of course, you can always come in here if you know the name of your package and you're gonna be installing it later, running just npm install later, you can come in here and just type it in. And I'm gonna say, okay, SHA-1 for that package, I want to have version 1.x. Save that, and then we can run it. npm install. And that will just read our package.json file and it'll install everything that we've got here. All right, so I hope that clears up some confusion or any questions that you have regarding these semantic versioning numbers. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. 
If you found it useful, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.